think of, right? I was in the Air Force, there was a guy from Newark, last name of McLean. Good dude, big dude. I remember he was trying to get that cadence going when we were marching at boot camp, you know. song but he figured out how to make it a cadence and thought he had it right it's one of those things I'll never forget roll that beautiful cold footage how's that for labor I should have been in the lower gear Get east a little bit and get off the mountain. Because you'll see the 
you'll see the terrain change too. We're in higher elevation, so it's more moisture in the air. Hence the trees are big. Once you come down the bottom, get off, off the mountain up here, and get into the eastern Arizona part where it's like more deserty, you'll see it's just like, I pointed it out in the last uh, video. Well, I didn't edit it yet, I might have not got to it, but when we're coming north, sorry, south in the Flagstaff, coming up the mountain, you can see the, the little bushes get bigger and bigger to a full blown tree. So now look around, there's all these big old pine trees everywhere. As we come down the hill here in a little bit, you're gonna see these pine trees disappear and go to like little bushes and be like what you picture a desert to look like, minus the big cactuses. That's down by Phoenix. You head down that way. And the same thing, you come down the mountain, heading south out of Flagstaff, head down the mountain, you'll see it like changes quickly from big trees to, to nothing, to then the big huge cactuses. I think uh, either somebody, and we, we might touch base on that later. Right now, I'm not at liberty really to talk about it because I got no beef with this with this group of people. But either somebody has been blind carbon copying me the emails he shouldn't be doing, or someone's trying to scam me, and I'm not really sure. And that really affects my March planning. It has nothing to do with mats. There's something before mats that. I was supposed to be a part of according to these emails, but I think someone's trying to scam my ass. And uh, I don't know. I did send out emails today to a couple of different individuals. Or rather their companies and say, hey, this is what's happening. I don't trust the emails that I got from this potentially scam email. And I don't know how to get into their system to get the big people, you know, the high ups emails. So I just kind of sent generic emails to their company to be like, hey, this is why I have this, what's going on. Here's copies of what's been emailed to me. What's the truth? Because from what I'm seeing and hearing, the emails and what I'm seeing on the ground do not match. So we might get into that later. We might not, I don't know. Obviously I have no problems with either one of these companies. But I think someone's trying to scam me. So I'll get down to the bottom of that real soon.
let's find a suitable family vehicle that fits what Fest checks do and uh, not worry about what some family member has to say. Let's just do what you guys feel is best because you guys are going to do stuff with me and we're going to need something more than a Toyota Corolla to take care of business. So, it's been a non-stop couple days in addition to getting editing done. boys and girls Orwell is washed up cleaned up looking a lot better I, had to, I try to jam my phone with my little uh, GoPro clip I throw it right here I had to use this to try to hold my phone to get the signpost get Dottie over green APU uh, some publicity shots Last year she used the absolute worst pictures on planet Earth of me. <laughs> so she's like, I need better pictures. So alright. Make sure I took them before well being. Oh yeah, there's that coal. Yeah yeah. Roll that beautiful coal footage. Obviously it had to be shut off and sit inside the you know truck wash. So I wound up getting the uh, Subway at the Loves. Just get the meatball sub. It's the thing I hate the least from Subway. And then came over here and got truck washed. So I should have Dottie her pictures and Orwell looks clean for now. I don't know if it'll create him any anxiety. 
man, and if I happen to be there and my sister shows up, so mom doesn't have an answer for me, but she assured me she understood that I'm not trying to be a mean, evil prick about it, but I'm 46 years old and I know what my dad was and I know what he is, and um, my mom knows I love my father, I just... It's really easy when you have a loved one that is so obviously, like, suffering with mental illness, so that when they hate on you, like my grandfather, for example, my mother's father, when he would hate on you, it was so obvious that he was out of his mind. So you didn't get mad at them, you didn't get mad at him, you just hated that it happened and it sucked and it hurt. But you were able to like, you never were angry at the man. You didn't have to forgive him because you never got angry at him. It was so obvious that it was mentally ill. But my dad is in like that middle ground where he ain't really right, but he ain't really gone either. It's like, he is, in my opinion, he's not capable of making major decisions. Um, but I'm not gonna push that issue. That's what for my mother to do. But in my opinion, my father is not competent to in trial, not competent to uh, sign legal paperwork or documents, and I have my mother talking about that to the police, uh, explaining that my father is not in his right state of mind any longer. <coughs> A different cop than did the CTW, which also makes it to where my sister knows my father is not of mental capacity, but pushed him to do a CTW on me anyway. So thus far, I've stand my ground, but my sister got a hell of a lawsuit on her ass if I need, if I decide to push it, which is kind of part of what I talked about with my mom. But I, I don't really want to cause my dad any angst if I go to visit him at the hospital, which I guess is the point of this conversation beyond trying to lay the groundwork down of what actually was happening. But the fact remains, if I go to see him, there might be problems. So. It's kind of one of those things where I love my dad, I just don't want to create any more problems for him. And he doesn't even really know what's going on fully anyway, so mom doesn't have the answer to whether I should Hazard go. Reported ahead. Mom doesn't have the answer whether I should go see him or not, so she understands where I'm coming from. I'm not wanting to create him any issues. I mean, if the man is truly on his way out, then why does he have to have more anxiety than he be. He's on enough medication to put him on planet Xenon, so let him, uh, let him go out with a dream. A good one, I guess. And I'll just remember who he was for all the years that he was. Yikes. I'll remember, I'll remember who he was for when he was a sound mental state. But my mom now admits that he made a colossal mistake in making a deal like he did with my sister moving to Texas. And the CTW, my mother understands, dies with him. And my mother will never, or to what she told me, she will never renew it, no matter what my sister threatens. In fact, the lawsuit that I could put on my sister might be the way my sister may have forced my sister to leave my mother alone and let her live the rest of her life with her freedom. I think that's how it's going to play out ultimately. But it was a constructive talk with my mom, who's got her own myriad of medical problems too. But we'll see. Mom knows I got her back and mom knows I'll move heaven and earth if I need to for her. But right now it's best that I stay away until my father passes away, whenever that may be. And the longer my father lives without me being able to see him, the more zeros we add to the lawsuit. If my sister don't be careful, I'll wind up owning her property and her house. She doesn't have enough money to pay for lawyers. That's a fact. She gotta lean on my dad to pay her bills every month. Her cut husband don't make enough money, I don't believe. And last I talked to my dad about it, he was crying a whine about having to support Tanya. Meanwhile, Tanya ties 10% to that church cult thing that she belongs to that prays in an abandoned shopping center. But Dad has to pay her bills.
made the decision where you chose to follow. You could have pushed against it, but you went with him thinking he knew best. But you made your decision too. And she admits that. So now she's just a little old lady and she wants to live the rest of her life happy and content. And that's all I want for her. Happy and cheerful, happy and cheerful. I'm trying. So I got here, it really wasn't all that late. Man, oh man. The parking was a nightmare up in here. I had to invent the parking spot. The trailer's actually up on the curb so I don't block the scale. I'm nosed up to this guy. So we had to get creative last night. I went to the Loves up the road. That's where we're going after the drop. The Loves, this place is a dump. What I love. They had no parking either. Loves is less dumpy. To me anyway. Alright, so a load drops about 20 mi 20 minutes. In here. Actual downtown. It's a tight spot. I was looking to maybe park at the customers. Line. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. No room, and, and Albuquerque is pretty rough. I remember back before. Remember back before COVID season. Then it turned into riot season. Weapon season. Duck season. Weapon season. Duck season. Weapon season. Duck season. Albuquerque, the TA over there, downtown was a nightmare. It was just full of vagrants and drug dealers and thieves and all kind of there at the wells. That was years ago. So I can only imagine how much better that area is now. Better meaning like, you know, haha, -ha, funny. So I ain't even I ain't even playing about going over to the TA over there.
rifle straight over our head, so. I mean, the city, not the car with no headlights. Internet in them Hamptons, ain't gonna lie. That's why I like them. 